So, glad you made it down to the globe first time here. Tickled to have to be here, yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Hey, welcome. My name's Rusty Martos. I'm a retired Air Force Mustang and an OEF veteran, and I uh, wanted to welcome you to Veterans and Bars Getting Bourbon. Cheers. Cheers. special guest, Miss Mary Ann Mater Jones, and Mary Ann works for Cowder Home Loan. So welcome to the Globe. Thank you. I'm glad to Thank have you. you. Glad to be here. Yes. Um, so we're going to delve into the 10 questions in here just a few minutes to learn a little bit more about, uh, you know, uh, your story and also about a little bit more about your organization that you work for, Cowder Home Loans. But before we do, we need to tell the audience um, a little about the drinks that we have in front of us. So I always choose a special bourbon for the guests that I'm going to be talking talking with and tonight I chose the Woodford Reserve Double Oak. Now Woodford Reserve Double Oak, what makes it very unique is it actually, they use two oak barrels to uh, get it to where it needs to be so we can enjoy the wonderful taste. So, which is different than a lot of the double oaks because most uh, bourbons, what they'll do is they'll use a old barrel. They use two brand new barrels for wow. it to give it. And what it does is it creates a sweet vanilla but very oaky flavor to it. So it's kind of like a toasted marshmallow over wood fire oak um, and then that wonderful vanilla tasting towards the end and of course here at the globe we're actually going to use um, they use this for their signature drink which is the fifth street manhattan so we'll send it over to the bartender mr josh so they can show how they made them but before we do that we should try it all right cheers 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 bar It's awesome. It's really, really good. Very good. Awesome. All right, so the first thing you want to do with any uh, Manhattan is uh, chill the glass. You want, to, you want the glass nice and cold. So we got the ice and the water in there. Now we're going to start putting our ingredients together. All right, first we're going to take the black walnut bitters. Just a couple dashes of that. <laughs> and then some Mara Maletti. Mm. And some sweet vermouth. And then for the fish street Manhattan, we use our uh, Woodford Double Oaked. You want to give that a nice stir. I'm going to garnish it with a Luxardo cherry. That is the Fifth Street Manhattan. Welcome back. As you know, we're here with uh, Miss Mary Ann Mater. We got our wonderful uh, Fifth Street Manhattan, the signature drink from the Globe. Um, and they are absolutely wonderful. They're it delicious. is really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> so I highly recommend it when you come down here. Definitely check it out. But we're going to learn a little bit more about you and how you kind of got involved in uh, the military veteran and family space. So I know you are a spouse of a veteran. Yes. Um, tell, a little, tell us a little bit about how that came about. How did you guys meet? 
Mm. It's, it's funny, we met at a VFW con conference down in Louisville, and my sister and her husband were involved with a VFW, and they dragged me along <laughs> for the fun, and we met down there, and I think from the very minute we looked at each other, we kind of knew that uh, something was up. That's awesome. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about um, his service. What branch was he in? He was a Marine. Okay. He was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, boots on the ground in Vietnam. Okay. Awesome. And awesome. Spent two years there and then came back and taught communications at Quantico for the oh, wow. remainder of his service. Wow. That's probably a heck of a story as well, I'm yes. sure. Yes. <laughs> Now, were you guys um, married during that time, the no. service time? No. I, okay. I, I met Ron after a service time, and uh, but we he's very, very heavily embedded with the VFWs. Okay. And has been a commander at two different posts, probably ten times at least. Oh, wow. And, yep. uh, so we've stayed very active with military families. Uh, but you also had some other family members that were uh, in the service as well. Can you tell us a little about yeah, that? Yeah, my father was in the Air Force. Okay. And that was before I was born. But two of my brothers, uh, my oldest brother Ed was in the Air Force, and so was my brother Mike. Um, so being a uh, kind of dependent, growing up with uh, such a, um, in a family of military members and then being married to a, a veteran as well, um, have you seen any type of particular challenges or anything as you went through all that? With, not for myself, but with them, I, I think the, the biggest challenges both my brothers had when they came out of service was reacclimating themselves to civilian life. Okay. And one brother more so than the other, but finding their, their niche mm -hmm. and finding their career path as it related to what they learned in the military. It, it was, they both managed, they both did well, but it was kind of a, uh, kind of an adjustment. Absolutely. Big adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm not, um, do you know when they, about what year or time frame that was when they kind of got out of the service? I think my, rough estimate. my oldest brother would have been 1972 when okay. he came out. Mm -hmm. And my second oldest brother would have been about 1978. Yeah, that's awesome that you um, talked about that because we see that still today. Yeah. Um, and that's really one of the main reasons that we started the Tri-State Veterans Community Alliance was to help bridge that uh, that's from service time through right. to, the, to the civilian time because you know you live a life of power, purpose, and passion, and then it's kind of just all done. Right. Um, and they train you how to be a warrior, and they do a great job of how to be in the service, but don't necessarily do a great job on the back end and right. teaching how to be a civilian right. again. So uh, that's absolutely still kind of the, the case still today, and we're working hard to yeah. get that fixed. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> so. that's it's a definitely a need. That military life is so regimented, and everything is planned for them. Them. And then when they come out and they're on their own, sometimes they struggle desperately mm -hmm. to find out where they fit in. Yeah, and um, a lot of times it's, uh, and you mentioned it, that, that kind of that struggle, it's uh, finding that community, that veteran community right. again that feels normal and comfortable to them right. and uh, helping them get through that period and mentor them through that kind of, or, it makes it a lot smoother right. for everybody. Um, yeah, and I know in Northern Kentucky, uh, especially, we struggle with that tremendously, and that's one of the reasons we start the Northern Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition is to identify resources, and that's kind of how we got together right. was through the coalition and using your resources at Calvert Home Loans for the VA Home Loans, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. But before we do, um, what are some of your fondest memories uh, or experiences, um, either growing up around the military or being around the veteran community, uh, so on? so forth. Growing up military, I remember when my first brother went into service, I was 10 years old. Wow. And I was so convinced that he was, wasn't going to come home. Uh, that's, that was very traumatic for me. I can remember the whole family, and I have 12 brothers and sisters, the whole family in the station wagon taking him to the airport. Wow. And um, I, I think I sobbed all the way home worried that he might not come home and um, but from the from the standpoint of my husband and I um, 
you know, I met him long after a service, and that memories, the memories with my brother were all I had. And I, I have to laugh because when Ron and I first got married, the thing that struck me the most was his military discipline. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Especially with things like laundry. He would help with laundry. And every crease was perfect. Everything was folded perfectly and stacked perfectly. And in fact, my daughter was in college at the time. And a few weeks after we were married and Ron was living in the house, she came up to me and said, Mom, you know I love you, right? I knew I was being set up as soon as she said that. And I said, yeah. And she goes, I just got to tell you, when it comes to laundry, Ronnie's got you smoked. <laughs> and she turned around and walked out. But, uh, well, and that definitely didn't stick with me, I tell you that. <laughs> he's still that way. He's still After that 13 way with years, the water, he's still that way awesome. today. Yep. yep. And, and no problem with that. Oh, no, that. no, no, no. I'm loving that. Every bit of it. <laughs> right. And, and we got talked a little bit about this already, and we, we talked about some of the challenges that you kind of seen with military and veterans and, yes. and their family members. But uh, is there anything that kind of strikes you? Um, strikes out at you that you see on a fairly regular basis? Yes, there is. There are often times that too many veterans don't know what's available to right. them. Mm -hmm. um, too many of them come out of service and they're lost. Yep. And I'm so thankful that I became aware of the TBCA and what they do because these guys need to be guided and steered. They can have com completely successful, happy lives with just that little bit of guidance and advice and help to send them in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, I see too much, too many times, being as heavily involved with the VFW posts, I see too many veterans that fall into a routine of um, just drinking and commiserating. And they need help. They need guidance to steer them where they need to be. And yeah. That's where the TVCA comes into play. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think what we see, if you look at it um, from a statistical standpoint, is if you come out and you t try to tackle it yourself, because you're taught in the military, you know, adapt, overcome, and figure it out. And the Student Veterans of America actually did a survey in 2016, and they found that about 70% of all veterans that get out of the service don't come with a plan at all. Yeah. They'll figure it out when they get there, yeah. you know? Well, TVCA, the North Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition, we can help develop that plan. And what we have seen is if you do it on your own, transition takes twice as long. Yes. And it also is twice the struggle. And a lot of times, um, and not everybody, but a lot of times when the veteran does attack at their own, um, it has peaks and valleys. Yes. And when you're in that low point, that's when the drinking, the drugs and everything kind of yes. hits, hits and it's harder to get back. So if you have someone to kind of help you through that, it's a lot easier, yes. smoother, and a lot shorter process. Absolutely. So I appreciate you bringing that up tremendously. Um, how about the other way? Is um, Have you seen anything um, positive or some of the things that bring forth or come forth from hanging out with military and veterans? Absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, some of the first things that struck me when I met Ron, when I became involved with the VFW Post, are the is is the absolute look, a lot of the veterans are very disciplined mm. and they're they're very 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 dedicated and they support one another through anything they they would do anything for one another and i i love i love that community i love that i love being embedded being embedded with the posts i love helping them i love my, my fa they've become my family. Oh, absolutely. They've become absolutely. my family. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that um, you see throughout in the veteran community. And one of the things that we found um, going through the coalition was a lack of a, a veteran community here in North Kentucky. So finding that community is so important. So one of the ways that we help with that is we do community events every quarter. So if you're looking for a community to be involved in, make sure that you follow us on our Facebook page. It's at 
the Northern Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition. So Northern Kentucky MVC, Mike, Victor, Charlie, follow us on Facebook. We'll see all our uh, different uh, activities that we do for the networking and events throughout the, the one. So that's awesome. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, maybe get a refresher on the drink, and we'll be right back and we'll talk about the, your organization at, with Calvert Great. Home Loans. Awesome. Well, welcome back, and uh, we're fortunate enough tonight to be here again at the Globe. So thanks for having us back. Oh, of course, of <laughs> course, just, anytime. And we're sitting here with General Manager Ben Jordan, and uh, he's been here at the Globe for a while now. And like I said, this is our second time coming back to film veterans and bars getting bourbon. So it's always a great pleasure to come down and see the great operation you have here. Thank and you. of course, you guys have a, a huge, wide selection of uh, bourbons. So we do. It's, we do. It's always fun and exciting. <laughs> you know, 106 <laughs> different types of bourbons. So, but for those that are not familiar with the Globe, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how Tony and Amy uh, Milburn uh, kind of came up with the name the Globe, the owners of the facility? So it was his ancestor's boat, which is sitting right behind us. Um, basically, it was a boat that they used to transport downriver to transport booze uh, for the most part and um, yeah it was it was just an old family heirloom pretty much <laughs> <laughs> so it all started with this guy right back behind us huh uh, yes sir <laughs> yes sir <laughs> and the building itself kind of has a unique um, perspective behind it I think it used to be something totally different than a bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's changed faces a little bit a yep. little bit um, we're sitting actually where uh, strip pool used to be it was okay. Club Venus it was a strip pool I knew so. I felt comfortable right here yeah, I didn't know I mean, why you know, you no, we're, we're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we'll get a shot of the bar here in just a little bit. But sure. uh, it, we mentioned a little bit about all the different types of bourbon that you have available here. Um, and of course, you guys are part of the Beeline. For the audience that doesn't know what the Beeline is, can you kind of explain what that means for them? Sure. The Beeline is kind of uh, it's an offshoot of the Bourbon Trail, which is down in Bardstown, Louisville, and Southern Kentucky, Lexington. I mean, it's a very long trail. But um, so we're the Urban Bourbon Trail up in northern Kentucky kind of the gateway into bourbon country from the north um, and where it's bars distilleries and restaurants that just carry a lot of bourbon and really promote the bourbon culture that is awesome it's so cool and of course if they want to get started with uh, joining the beeline how do they go about doing that uh, joining the Beeline, you can actually come to any of our participating bars, restaurants, or distilleries and get a Beeline passport. And so anytime you go to one of the different places, get your get your stamp on it, and you are good to go. And there's different things that you can get for your, getting these things completed. Yeah, swag's always cool and good. It's and I'm fun. Sure, I'm sure it's bourbon-type yeah. swag. Um, I, I joined the Beeline a few months ago when we were here last time. Sure, and so uh, yeah. I'm yeah. working on getting my full <laughs> swing of swag on. Uh, but you can find all the information about the Beeline at findyoursippingpoint.com. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about our operations? Sure, yeah. Here at the Globe, we are open Tuesday through Saturday. Um, for, we open around 4. Um, no really closing time. Just depends on how people are drinking, how we're having, you know, how the night's going. But then Sundays, we open around 3. And again, we're ready to go all day. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ben. I appreciate the time again today and again for having us down the film. Another episode of Veterans and Bars Getting Bourbon. Well, thank thanks, you man. very much. All right, well, welcome back to Veterans and Bars Getting Bourbon. I'm here with my special guest, Ms. Mary Ann Mater from Caliber Home Loans. So we're going to delve into a little bit about the organization and what they bring to the military, veterans, and their families here in Northern Kentucky. But before we go or do so, every episode we like to do a challenge. So for this particular challenge, uh, we met uh, Mr. Ben Jordan, the general manager here at the Globe, and he talked about the Beeline and the Beeline Passport. So this month's challenge is is go to our Facebook page. It's the North Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition. Go to that and post your picture of your favorite bourbon drink along with your Beeline passport and you'll be put in for an opportunity to win a special prize package from one of our coalition partners. So go ahead and do that and uh, watch for our Facebook post. Put your picture on there of your favorite bourbon drink and your Beeline passport and you'll be put in for a special drawing so but let's talk a little bit more about uh, caliber home loans and the organization that you're involved with uh, tell us a little bit about how you guys support the local military veterans and their family members well you know um 
I've been doing mortgages for 23 years. I've just joined Caliber in January, and uh, I did not know how dedicated they were to military when I first joined. I, I didn't know, and it, that was inc an incredible blessing. Mm -hmm. Caliber has been designated by the VA as a military-friendly lender. We do a lot of projects throughout the year. Uh, they, they involve the entire company nationwide in simple things like we made paracord bracelets during military week and sent them to soldiers. But from a lending standpoint, all of our loan officers have to take extra training to become a certified veteran lending specialist. And as many years as I've been doing VA loans, I learned a lot of things that I did not know. A lot of little caveats about what you can do with VA lending that many, many lenders choose not to. Uh, just for instance, there is no limit on a VA loan where normally in northern Kentucky counties, 453100 is the maximum conforming loan limit. That's the maximum amount that I can loan with no down payment, but you can borrow any amount over that with a small down payment and get better terms than a jumbo loan. Ninety-nine. Every lender I've ever worked with before doesn't go there. Wow. Yeah. And I, what's really cool is um, it's open to not only active duty military but veterans as well. Exactly. So it's, and in some cases, it could be their spouse the too. Spouses of deceased veterans. If that person died from a service-related illness or injury, their spouse can be eligible for veteran for VA financing. Yeah, very cool. And, then, and if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've um, sent clients over to you that uh, either we're looking to refinance or get into a better situation yep. and some other things too. Yes, so. and I've been able to work with them. One client that you sent me, credit was so good and had money he wanted to put down, so a VA loan was not the best option for him. But it still is a veteran that I helped, and I helped him with a product that was actually suited more for him. Well, that makes even uh, a better situation yes. for that because yes. you're not just selling the VA home loan. Right. It could be there's something out right. there that's better for him. We want to make right. sure it's the best opportunity for that uh, military member or that veteran right. or that family. Many veterans don't realize that uh, VA lending allows for bruised credit, what I call bruised credit. And there are cases, one that you referred to me this week, where a gentleman does not meet the minimum credit score, but I've got credit counselors that will volunteer their time and help him, and we'll rapid rescore him, and we'll get him into a home within the next four to five months. No, that's really cool. So it, um, not only can you get a VA home loan or any type of home loan, uh, but there's also some counseling that's available Absolutely. as well. So First time home buyer counseling, credit counseling. I'll do the credit counseling and budget counseling myself. But that's my little give back for that's, veterans in the area. That's awesome. So I appreciate that. So if um, say there's an angel donor out there that's watching and they have about a million dollars they want to give you and your organization, what could you use that money for? Two things. Okay. Two things. First thing would be veteran homelessness. Mm -hmm. yep. That's a place that's near and dear to my heart. Not necessarily to help them own homes, but to get them off the street. Right. The other thing would be to enhance what's out there for veterans coming out of the military to just guide them in the right direction so that they're not they're not lost when it comes down to budgeting to home ownership to jobs everything too many of them come out of the service where everything was dictated for them and everything was structured and they were told what to do into a situation where now they got to figure it out. And that's why I love the TVCA. I'm so thankful to have been connected with you. But I would throw every bit of money that I have to help you guys help them and help them myself. Well, I appreciate that tremendously. And that's, uh, it's interesting you mentioned homelessness because that's one of the things that we've seen in North Kentucky. And uh, if you asked me that several months ago, I would say, well, we had no homeless problem in North yes, Kentucky. And that's not the case at all. We actually have about 90 homeless veterans that we're working with through the Welcome House um, to try to find them housing. And the, the biggest issue has been affordable housing. Right. It's not that they don't qualify. It's they can't find anywhere to use the, the uh 
the HUD bash program or the grants and that are available to them. Right. So right. I, I think that would be amazing. So please give us a million dollars so we can <laughs> help solve that. <laughs> it would be problems. put to good use. It would be put to great <laughs> use, yeah. Um, what is the best way for people that want to reach out to your organization or reach you directly? How, what's the best way for them to do so? My website has everything that they need to reach me, phone numbers, email addresses, and that's www.marelens.com. M-A-R-E, which is my nickname, Lens, L-E-N-D-S, dot com. Awesome. And we'll make sure to put a, a, something up for everybody to be able sure. to reach that and put it in the show notes as well. So who else um, have you come across in your time working at uh, either Calvert Home Looms or with the uh, Coalition or TVCA or anybody in North Kentucky that uh, is an absolute must that we need to be on this show and get out to the population? My first thought would be get a veteran service officer in here okay. because there are too many veterans out there that don't know everything that's available to them and get them in here to talk about everything that they can do to help them lead a productive, happy, well-adjusted life. Awesome, awesome. And uh, kind of the last question, if I finish up our 10 questions, is, is there anything that we missed that we need to talk about or you want to share? I don't think so. Honestly, we've covered the, the gamut pretty well. Of um, course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we got drinks still. We do. We have cocktails. <laughs> and I'm just, uh, I feel like I finally found my niche where I need to be because you guys are doing the things that I've dreamed about doing for veterans for a long time and I'm just tickled to death to be able to be a part of it now. Well, well we appreciate you and we appreciate you taking the time to come down and talk to us here at Veterans and Bars Game Bourbon. Cheers to you. Cheers to the bar. Cheers to Hope everybody. you guys all enjoy your bourbon. <laughs> we want to thank the Globe one more time. Thank you Globe. Thank you Bar. Thank you for everybody that came down for this taping of Veterans and Bars Getting Bourbon. Of course, we want to thank our special guest, Ms. Mary Ann Mater Jones with Caliber Home Loans. Make sure to reach out to her if you're interested in any of the things that she talked about today. And of course, if you want to reach out to us, you can certainly do that through our website at www.tristatevca, that's victortroyalpha.org, or you can call us at 513-845-6822. Of course, follow us on our Facebook page. We have two. They are at the Military Veteran Coalition, the North Kentucky Military Veteran Coalition, or the Tri-State VCA Facebook. Thank you, everybody, for your time and your attention. Let's finish our drinks and cheers. Cheers, cheers bar. <laughs>